I'll be honest, welcome to After Dark. I'm sorry about the boots, but I'm running late tonight. I'll get them on shortly. Sit down there, boys, and hang in. Now, this is the last of our special shows where we look at the best of interviews that happened through 1982. And next week, we're back live, and we'll make it on time next week. Now, some of the people we interviewed last year were Jonathan Coleman, Ross Wilson, you'll see them tonight, Ivor Davies, Tiny Tim, George Smelovich, very clever man, Steve Gilpin from Isaacs, Patty Moston, one of our publicists uh, that is best known in this country, handles all the overseas people and does it well too. Chris Haviland, impressionist, and you can take that anyway. You like in life? <laughs> no, I can't. Police of Forest, Patty will kill me. Uh, the Beatles and Robert Palmer and Flash Gordon is coming up. You're gonna let this go to where? All right. The Beatles first up. Here they go, Patty. Please, it's 83 now. Give me a break. Can we work out how you first formed that band? Well, see, that's, a, that's the end stage. of a, a long evolution too. See, I started out like Eric did. There were a few bands in our neighbourhood at that time into R&B and I just kind of, it evolved from there. Ended up in a band with Ross Hannaford called the Pink Finks. And that went on to Daddy Cool. Now, when you five went to America, <laughs> right, five years later, you went to America and this was one of the headlines in a, a mag over there, apparently. Daddy Great Kirk stuff. Hit right. Hollywood with a bang. You still believe all that hype. And you're <laughs> right. US DJs years later. hailed Eagle Rock as a song of the decade. Well, it was a... It, <laughs> that's what Molly Meldrum says, not US DJs. Now, let me see. Um, Where did that come from, then? Well, probably our record company. <laughs> Print one up. The hype department. No, no, seriously, you went down no, well no. with that song. We went down pretty well, and the song did have, did hit the high spots yeah. in quite a few states. But as you know, America's a big place. Got no hope, yeah, but I don't mind. Hey, don't you know me? I'm the future divine. I'm a photo. I gotta go. Don't have to stay, cause the answer is no. Play the see that you love is blind. Hey, don't you know me? I'm a future divine. You've done a lot of travelling in and out of the country quite a few times over the last couple of years. Right. Have you seen all countries and their music? And if so, which country, uh, I mean, the Western world, uh, which country do you think is now leading the world? Um, when, I, when I went away the first time, I imagined that possibly Australia was leading the world. When I came back, I was absolutely convinced. Yeah? Um, the reason being is that this is a massive place. It's, it, per head of population, right. definitely the most active place. Uh, I was really hard-pressed to find a good venue or a good band to see in Los Angeles any night of the week. Um, possibly because I don't know the city so well, but there weren't as many clubs in Los Angeles mm. that had bands on as, as there were in Sydney. Um, in London, obviously, uh, it's got to the stage and has been for a while that it costs bands money to tour. Yeah. And therefore, uh, they don't bother anymore. Um, and that's generally the level of interest that's happening with with live music, whether it's because of the economics or not, I don't know, but that's why all these studio bands have evolved, because it's right. it's not worth playing playing to people anymore. So do you think that will eventually When you went to apply for the job originally in Wonderworld or with Wonderworld, did you go in as a, a real zany guy and, and throw them some crazy stuff, or did you actually go in serious and they thought, no, you could be crazy? I went in as a joke, really. 
I mean, I was working at uh, 2WS, which was yeah. a young radio station then. Yeah. <laughs> so young it was, didn't even have hair under its arms. And uh, I went in as this sort of copywriter and then and they said, uh, I met this chubby person called Townsend and yeah. said, uh, look at this pilot. And I looked at the pilot and I said, that's great, but who are you going to get as a real proper host? Yeah. It's not, you know, you giggle a lot and everything, you know. <laughs> and he said, that's me. And I thought, oh, there goes that job. Be cool. Be smart. Get out of the house. Compared to me, you are what you eat. Can't you see? You are what you eat. I could do an interview, seriously, I could do an interview about this lounge suite. Yeah. I mean, I could do one about the, the mic stand, the, the, the tables, anything. It's immense. It's, uh, it's just making something out of nothing and making it some sort of entertainment. Well, you've been doing it for years, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you here. I'm really into punk yoga. That's when you stand on somebody else's head. <laughs> I like that. And, uh, well, a uh, little song now. I'd like to dedicate this song to a guy who's really, really laid back. This guy is actually so laid back that when he says, I'm going to roll a roll a number you know you can go down the shop buy a packet of cigarettes smoke three take a taxi to the airport get drunk fall asleep wake up a few hours later catch a plane to bali get a suntan come back to australia realize you left your sunglasses back in bali go back and pick them up get back to australia again read war and peace twice through and backwards to get the full impact of it have a game of space invaders win a few extra games and get back home just in time for him to say to you hey listen man you want to lick the papers my <laughs> mouth is really dry <laughs> You've seen those new announcers on Channel O, I mean Channel Nothing. You know how they sort of go... In Fairfield Town Hall. We, uh, <laughs> a bit of a, we were in America late last year and a couple of people asked at that time where my sex were. They'd heard of you, seen you when you were over there. Mm. And that's as far back as, what, 1980? Uh, yeah. So why haven't you gone back to well, rekindle? Uh, we, this is what the break from the road is for, really. We're really going to concentrate on writing. Memories left behind closed doors Out on the street, she knows the score well, Why we haven't gone back to America is that every band that goes, they just spend so much money. And, and uh, unless it's really very well set up, and you have got a guarantee of getting so many thousand people in the doors. Mm -hmm. It costs you uh, per head so many dollars for them to come and see right. you. You know, it does. You've got to realise that how I many you go through all this again, it's a big financial thing, rock and roll, isn't it? When it, right. when it? when it boils down to it, you know, you've got 40 men on the road and you've got to put them in a bed, each one, right. per night. And in the States, and you know, you just come from how much it is for a hotel. Yeah, it's dear, well, we right. pay for that, you know, yeah. so. Well, you're all. Can we talk about people that have come to you from say America or England and you have reports on them so you go about your publicity and you find when they get here that you've been slipped a herring you know they're just not as good as they're supposedly made out to be that was sort of like that... a Molly question Donnie what <laughs> it's around the world <laughs> you know what I mean uh, have you ever had a red herring you've been slipped a bad <coughs> group and, but, but been told they're great certainly right did you name a couple no. Well, how do you go about covering that? All of a sudden, you've been running around telling difficulty. everyone this band is great, and they get here and you go... <clears throat> well, you faint. <laughs> you just go into... Well, I do. I yeah. just go into a state. Because I've got to be the oldest band mole in the business. I am sailing. I am sailing. Home again. I guess I started singing uh, with bands and so on, mm. and from there I went into just doing, you know, restaurant solo work. Right. And I was asked to do something a little bit different, and as I'd normally sung as it sounded to me, yeah. whatever I was singing, a song sounded like whatever it sounded, you know, whatever key it was in, I did it in the written key. Mm. And uh, so I went on to a show that was asking for something slightly different so I said oh, well, I'll put two or three of the guys I do anyway right and uh, I said yeah terrific and it seemed to go well who did you do so, in those days um, uh, Elvis you know the right. usual thing I said hi I 
<laughs> Welcome back to After Dark. Hope you're having a good time. Some nice people we're seeing tonight, and we'll be back to look at some more of the highlights from last year shortly. But now it's Flash Gordon time, everybody, and this is the miracle of magic. Flash. Ah, oh, you know what I've just realised? There's a few more of the special segments from last year's shows that were put together by Flasher Fletch. And then it's like goodbye for this week and next week we're back live, which is a pretty good thing, actually, get into some new people and get the whole thing happening for 83. So let's have a look at a few more highlights and next week we catch you live on After Dark. Hope to see you then. Please join us. The start of 1982 was very quiet. You were off the road and all that. Now you've ended on a high note with a hit single mm. and a hit album. I read somewhere that you said, well, it gave us time to, to get our heads into gear and to mm. write and all that. Were you actually <coughs> thinking of maybe, after three years of non-stop work, throwing it all away at that stage? No. <laughs> no? Well, yes, we all... No. <laughs> no, actually, um, uh, funnily enough, because we had that time off, it... it uh, let us reassess a lot of things and, and just mm. you know discuss a lot of things that you don't really have time to discuss while you while you're out on the road and recording yeah. and, and just um, it also got us off the road live you know yeah and uh, you've got to have a dynamic in your own life to mm. have a dynamic on stage so I think so Long. you want the hairdresser yeah if you could. okay this geezer right it goes to the hairdressers you know hairdressers barbers they talk to you when they're cutting, they're cutting your hair right the barber says, you going anywhere for your holidays? He says, yeah, I'm going to Italy. He says, don't bother. It's me and the wife went last year. He says, what do you want to go to Italy for anyway? He says, I like Italian food. He says, it's all fish and chip shops. He says, well, I'm going for the sunshine. He says, it pissed down every day last time we were there. He says, well, look, I've got a penchant for Romanesque architecture. He says, you can't see it. He says, everywhere you look. It's surrounded by corrugated iron. They're renovating the place or something. Romanesque architecture is out of the question. He says, look, the real reason why me and the wife want to go to Italy is we want to see the Pope once before we die. He says, you'll be lucky. He says, you stood there in St. Peter's Square with 65 million of the faithful. You're lucky if you see the top of his act. He says, look, I've got the tickets now. I've got to go. I can't get out of it. So he comes back from Italy, goes back to the barbers about a month later. The barber says, aren't you the bloke that went to Italy? He says, yeah. He says, how did it go down? He said, I had a great time. He says, the food was fantastic. Sunshine, wonderful. The Romanesque architecture has to be seen to be believed. <laughs> he says, what about the Pope? He says, well, I'll tell you about that. I was stood in St. Peter's Square with 60 th 65 million other Catholics. I could just make out the top of his act when he points his bejeweled staff my way. <laughs> The crowd parted to a man. He came down the stairs and he walked right up to me. And do you know what he said to me? He says, what? He says, who cut your <laughs> name? <laughs>